This looks absurd, but I love it. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. More on them later. Over the past four years, I've really pushed myself to grow as a designer and fabricator and overall maker of things. And one of the things that I've learned is that while I really enjoy making weird gadgets and gizmos, what really excites me is making fictional characters come to life and beginning my journey into animatronics. Now, over the years, I've been doing it the hard way, using controllers or keyboards or manually hard coding things, which is not fun. So what I would love to do is to be able to animate on a computer or take pre-recorded animations and translate that to my actual hardware. That sounds fun, but that doesn't solve the problem that animation is tedious and also I don't know how to animate. So what I really want to do is electronically puppet my creations. Now, this idea isn't new. In fact, you could say that this is the concept of a pantograph that mimics your motion exactly. But the concept, the more modern idea for controlling robots, comes from a 1940s two short story by Robert Heinlein called Waldo and Magic Incorporated, where this guy builds a telerobotic manipulator that allows him to control robotic arms, and the term Waldo kind of stuck. So that's what I'm gonna build today, my own Waldo that I can program to control whatever I want. Now my current animatronic hurdle involves bringing this guy Hello. to life. This is Wheatley from the game Portal 2, and he's got a lot going on inside. In my version, he's got 11 separate servos and one digital aperture. So that's 12 different things that I need to control and I want to be able to do it solo. So if I want to do that, I need some way to capture mechanical motion and turn that into electrical signals and then capture that in code and turn that back into some sort of sequence that can control the servo motors inside his chassis and control, well, just about anything I want because I want this to be something I can apply to um, a wide variety of characters. So how am I going to do that? So at the heart of my build, I'm gonna be using a position sensor for each of the mechanical joints that I want to capture. So this is basically a fancy potentiometer. So like this analog knob, but as you can see, it's tiny and really compact. So this will be easy to incorporate into my design. I just need to have something that fits into that hollow shaft. And when I connect it to a Wii computer on a chip, like this microcontroller here, that means I can measure the angular position of the sensor. Now I can capture all of the motions I want to and translate that to the positions of the motors of, in this case, Wheatley. I've made a few parts and we're gonna put them all into this frame, which some of you might recognize as the carcass of an old 3D printer. Now, there's a lot going on, and I'm going to explain it piece by piece in my thought process, but there are too many little fiddly bits. Look at those fiddly bits. There are dozens of parts, and as much as I would love to mm, talk about the artistry that went into each and every one of them, there's just too much to go over. So I'm gonna build it, and then we'll break it down, and I'll explain how and why it works the way it does. And when everything's said and done, we end up with this. So let's take a tour of the Waldo. And I'll walk through all the sensors and what they do. First up, we've got the sensor that measures pitch of the whole assembly. Fairly straightforward. It attaches to the uh, hex bolt that attaches to the Lazy Susan, which is important because this controls the main roll. So this is the roll sensor right here, which is geared in a four to one ratio. And moving forward, we've got 
three identical servos, not servos, sensors that mimic the servos for the parallel motion platform. So this will allow me to move in and out and tilt left and right, which is the range of motion that I need. Moving down, we've got two more sensors that mimic the mechanical motion of servos. So these will allow for panning and tilting of the inner eye. At the end, we've got the hand control, this hand, these hand flaps, how I've dubbed them. And this I will use to control the eyelids. So these are independently controlled, so that's why they don't have a shared axis. And ergonomically, to the side here, for my left hand, I have another hand flap mechanism, and this will allow me to control the handles of Wheatley. And one more sensor that I can use to control the digital aperture. So, let's just put this in here. Oh, and if you've made it this far into the video, I appreciate you, I really do. I make these videos because I wanna make your day a little bit better and make the world just a little bit more interesting. So that means I'm designing and building all the time. And that means I don't have time to build a personal website to showcase all the things that I can do, which is why I leave that to the experts. In this case, Squarespace, today's sponsor. If you're a creator like me, social media is a great way to get your stuff out there. But having a personal website is an even better way to showcase everything that you do all in one place. And Squarespace has over 200 TLDs, top level domains, like the classic .com or maybe .xyz for you to choose from so you get exactly what you want. And you don't have to be a coder, a JavaScript expert, or a CSS artiste. All you have to do is choose what you want your website to look like and it's done. And it's even mobile friendly automatically. You don't have to do anything extra to make it look good on a tablet or a phone or your desktop. You just make one website, Squarespace does the magic in the background. So if you wanna make a website, head on over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And if you're ready to get started with your website, head on over to squarespace.com forward slash Mr. Volt for 10% off. Use the coupon code Mr. Volt for 10% off your first website or domain today. All right, let's go play with robots. Actually, there's a little bit more work to do. I need to measure all of the uh, sensor data so that I can calibrate the range of motion from this to the range of motion that is actually physically possible on my animatronic so that I don't break anything. So that I don't break anything. I fried one of the handle motors. Woo! Immediately fried. I uh, drove it past its limits. So the lower handle is completely dead. Bit harder to see, but the servo that controls roll slips. That is going to be a lot harder to manage. Anyway, I'm gonna set this back up and uh, we'll do some puppeteering with the elements that do work. All right, so everything's connected and we are ready to test it out. Right now there is a direct link to the controller inside. I'm gonna to switch to Bluetooth once things are ready, but this makes uh, everything a lot easier to debug. So I know things are working if there's a direct connection. So let me slip into the wall dough. Uh, now I can control that pitch. Oh, I'm tilting too far back and controlling the parallel motion of his eye is a little, is a little difficult. It's going to take some time to learn how to puppet everything and I'll also just need to play around with the mapping of the Waldo to the servos. But I've got up eyelid control, lower eyelid, whoop, upper eyelid. Right now the inner eye is too tightly coupled to the eyelids, so I can't just control the inner eye 
without controlling the eyelids very easily. So what I think I'm gonna do is put a thumbstick somewhere so that I can control just the eye, the inner eye, and that will make everything a lot easier and make the wall dough less floppy. But uh, I've wanted this for so long. This is gonna make my life so much easier. And let's see if I can, it's hard to provide enough of a rigid base too, because I'm pushing against this floating platform and that makes it a little bit harder. So being able to look left and right is a challenge right now. And I've disabled the twitchy servo so I don't have full control of his parallel motion platform. Of course, I still need to upgrade the servos for the handle as well and fix the servo that allows rotation for his roll axis, but we're almost there. Almost there. All right, if you have any ideas for what I should do with my Waldo or ways that I can improve it, let me know in the comments below and subscribe to see where this goes because I think it's gonna be fun. All right, see you guys later. Ugh.